Haaland, Salah and double Aston Villa attack, this wildcard draft might just tempt you. Welcome to the Gianni Batici YouTube show. Hope you guys are well. You're looking forward to game week three. The original plan probably wasn't to wildcard, but you might just be tempted when you see this 15-man squad. Stay tuned to see what I think is a very good squad that not only sets you up for the next 10 game weeks or so, but it also gives you brilliant benching options and plenty of upside picks. Guys, do hit that like button and please do subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Without further ado, let's have a look at this 15-man squad. In goal, no surprises. I think many of us have made a mistake by going for 4.5 million keepers. You spend the extra, you get David Raya and it looks like a no-brainer, doesn't it? Two clean sheets in two so far from Raya, but also even if the fixtures are tricky, like Brighton, Spurs, Man City, yeah, it's not the best entry point for an Arsenal defender. But after that, it's really, really nice run. And Arsenal have shown us they can keep clean sheets against anyone. And actually last season against Man City at the Etihad, they kept a clean sheet. So Raya for me is a no-brainer pick. I wish I went there myself. He's in at 5.5. Before we see the rest of the team though, let me show you some defensive data now. It's too small a sample size to read into too much data at, at this point of the season. Two games, sure. But I'm just going to show you the expected goals conceded so far. And look who's top of the charts. Liverpool. Yeah, that's right. Arna Slots Liverpool are going to be good defensively. I called that pre-season, which is why Trent was set and forgetting my team. Uh, City have been good, Forest have also been good, and then of course Arsenal, but also Brighton and Spurs, not as bad as perhaps we might have imagined Spurs, who were so leaky last time out, and then right at the bottom of the table, three teams to definitely avoid, this is interesting, Ipswich, but then Everton and Newcastle, two teams we probably thought would be quite good defensively, have been really bad, Newcastle conceded over 4xG, Everton almost 4xG, yeah, warning there on those two players. So this is from the scout members area, guys. There's a link in the description to Fantasy Football Scout if you want to check it out. So let's look at my defensive picks with some of this data in mind. Trent, I don't think we need to talk about Trent. Like, best value player in the, like, arguably one of the best value players in the game, I think. Genuinely rate him so, so highly. And remember, he's had a big price drop this season. He was more expensive last season. He's going to keep more clean sheets. And assist points are coming. He hasn't had a, a goal contribution yet this year. He's still got bonus points. He's still creating plenty. We've gone for Rico Lewis in the back line. Now, many will say this is a risky pick, and it is. And I don't want to have too many risky picks because I've been stung already in my actual team. But, and this is a big but, this is all about covering in with other good defenders on the bench. We're not flooding the bench with 4 million options. We'll get to that in a second. So Rico Lewis is in. He had more penalty area touches than Haaland uh, on game week two. Hit the bar. He had a goal disallowed game week one. He's a very, very legit option at right back. And sure, Carl Walker will at times come in. But that's all right. When Rico Lewis starts, he's going to be dynamite. West Ham, Brentford, Arsenal up next. Anthony Robinson got the bonus points, got the assist. A seven-pointer, even though he conceded in game week two. Robinson's a great pick and he's in my wildcard team. He's in my actual team as well. So look, that's the back three. We're actually going to put a couple of defenders on the bench as well. So let's just go to them now because this is really important. There's Nijekovic, who is the right back standing at Aston Villa. Matty Cash looks like he's done his hamstring. We could have a four million gift here at right back for Aston Villa. I don't want to relive the Barco moments of pre-season, but genuinely... This guy's set to start at 4 million for Aston Villa. He's my first substitute. Let's put him first on the bench, right? And then my third sub is going to be Lewis Dunk because I think Brighton, as we've seen from that defensive data, they were fifth for XGC. Brighton are going to keep clean sheets. Four and a half million. He offers a bit of goal threat. Oh, and we should probably put a sub keeper in as well. Let's just put Bentley there at four million. So we've still got one bench spot left, which we'll get to later in midfield. But that is the back line. And yes, you might say Rico Lewis is a is a, a rotation risk. And sure he is. But that's fine because you've got two very good backup options there as well. Well, uh, guys, this video is sponsored by OneFootball, and I want to give a big shout out to OneFootball because it's an app I use on a daily basis. Honestly, first thing in the morning, the first thing I look at is football news. We all do. And OneFootball is my go-to for transfer gossip, especially this week with the window closing, for video clips of the goals, for fixtures, for alerts, all of that stuff. OneFootball, not just for Premier League football, but the big European leagues. I follow my Serie A news on there as well. Do check it out. There's a link in the description to download it. It's free and it's brilliant. Let's look at the midfielders then, shall we? Um, and before we see the midfielders, 
I feel like I should back up my argument in midfield with some data. So as I caveated the expected goals conceded data, I'm also going to caveat the expected goals data. Let's not read too much into it. It's a small sample size, two fixtures. But top of the charts for expected goals conceded, the best defences were Liverpool, Man City. So far, the best attacks, expected goals, 5.31 Liverpool, 4.11 Man City. Number one and number two, again, those two teams, which is why this team has three Liverpool and two Man City players in. Man United a third, West Ham fourth, Forest fifth, Spurs and Brighton are also in the top seven. But what I wanted just to point out was, look at 16th, Newcastle. They've only, and yeah, they had 10 men for 60 minutes in game week one, but under 2xG, I don't think it's good enough. And if you want Isak and if you want Anthony Gordon, you might want to reevaluate this. So, look, for me, Newcastle really struggling there at 16th in attack. They've been weak defensively at 19th and 16th in attack. So, Newcastle players have gone from my team, uh, this wildcard team, and my actual team, I've got triple Newcastle. So, let's move away from the chart and go back to the pitch then. So, the defence looks good. The goalkeeper's set. Solid backline with defensive options coming in. Just the one premium defender, but the 4.5-ish options are good enough this year. But this is where we need to spend some money. Mo Salah comes in. He's at a price rise, we think, at 12.6. Um, Mo Salah has to be in any wildcard draft. Part of the reason many will be wildcarding is because of Mo Salah. Is he needed and is he worth wildcarding for? Possibly not in game week three, but I think he is in game week four. Because in game week four, he plays Forest. And then he plays Bournemouth. It's a very, very nice run for Mo Salah. So he's in alongside Jota. And that's the key, I think. So many teams that ha don't have Salah have Jota. And so many teams that have Salah don't have Jota. Make the most of being able to have both. It is a brilliant, brilliant double up, especially with Trent. The fixtures are there. They're playing the best football in the league. Jota's starting number nine. And sure, he's coming after, off after 75 minutes. That doesn't matter. Jota's going to get returns. At 7.6 million, he's had the price rise, just like Salah. They're going to be a lethal combination. Look, you can have them both for just over 20 mil. I think it's worth the investment because the fixtures are so, so good. And actually, we can look at the fixture ticker and we can see, yeah, it might not be uh, the best entry point. An entry point always feels important with wildcard, but it shouldn't be because you're not wildcarding for one week, wildcarding for five, six, seven. And look, Man United at Old Trafford for Liverpool is usually a quite a high-scoring fixture. So it's not a bad entry point. And then after that United game, I've filled with the ticker from an attack, right? And you can do this in the scout members area. This is the, We've got Villa at the top and Everton. But down in fourth, we've got Liverpool. And after Man United, it's Forest at home, Bournemouth at home, Wolves away. Chelsea just scored six there. Palace away. And then Chelsea at home. It's a brilliant, brilliant run for Liverpool. And it's why, if you're wildcarding, you need to go triple up and you need to go big. Spend money on Salah, on Trent, and I think Jota. You could go Robertson instead of Jota. You could go Luis Diaz instead of Jota. You could even go Sabotla instead of Jota. There's options there. But I'm telling you, in terms of top tip, if you're on wildcard, triple Liverpool feels essential. So, yeah, good to see the ticker there. Other teams you might want to note on the ticker, and this is a difficult one because it's pretty varied and the teams at the top are important. Aston Villa, right at the top. This is why, spoiler alert, I'm going to have a double Aston Villa attack. But we can also see um, uh, Fulham sort of halfway up. For the immediate few, Fulham look like they've got a good run. I like Ipswich, West Ham, Newcastle, Forest as a set of four. And then it gets a bit trickier with Man City and Villa. So look, let's go back to the team, shall we? And remember, um, we are going to have double Aston Villa attack. Um, you may have guessed uh, which two players uh, that will involve. And guys, if you are enjoying the video, uh, do drop a comment. But also hit that like button and please consider subscribing to the channel. Um, um, I'm on a journey this season to build my following and there's regular content on a daily basis now on this channel. So subscribe and you'll check out and see my lives. I've got some special guests coming up on my lives. Uh, and of course, all these pre-recorded videos as well, which are, are dropping. I've got my team selection out on Thursday this week. That'll be a locked team selection for you. So look, Smith Rowe comes in. I mentioned Fulham. I like the fixtures. I like the goal threat. I like the fact he's getting 10... 10 points when he scores a goal because he's getting bonus points even though he's not playing 90 yeah he's, his underlying numbers are good and he's going to start playing 90 very soon he's still building his fitness he looks good the fixtures are nice Fulham are signing well as well some good signings at Fulham 
And then it, we've got Rodgers. Morgan Rodgers has been amazing in game week one and two. How he hasn't produced points, he's just been unlucky. Um, the fixtures are there for Morgan Rodgers. He's playing as a second striker, just off Ollie Watkins. I like him very, very much as an option. He's a no-brainer in a wildcard team. And actually, in your actual team, if you're selling in Kunku, go down to Rodgers, save some money. Great, great shout. So look, he's in. Uh, and the midfield is, of course, Salah, Jota, and then it's two cheap players at 5.5, 5 million. And we're also going to add a third to the bench who will rotate with these uh, these other two. So Smith Rowe, Rogers, and Minter of Brighton, the three of them, are, it's likely two will always be starting. You could even start all three and go to a 3 5 2 and bench my third forward. We'll get to him in a second. So Minter is there on the bench. Again, Brighton have got some lovely fixtures coming up. Um, of course, it's a bad entry point with Arsenal away. But how about Ipswich at home and Forest at home for big ceiling games? Yeah, that's why Minter's in this draft. Haaland, of course, is in. Do we need to speak about Erling Haaland? You all know what you're getting. There's an, he's gone up in value already, guys. Erling Haaland's the best player in the game. He gives us the best captaincy options most week. He's, of course, in. But alongside him, this is where it gets controversial because so many had Isak. So many have had Solanke, but he's, of course, injured. But is Ollie Watkins going to become the best sort of second forward in the game? I know he's been bad game at one and two, but let's not have short memories. Let's remember last season where he was the best point scorer up front in the game. He outperformed Erling Haaland last year in terms of total points. He just needs a goal. But remember, he hasn't had much of a preseason, so he's been coming off early. He hasn't got his rhythm or his routine yet. He's about to play Leicester. Mm. And after that, he plays Everton. Mm. Everton, who were 18th for expected goals conceded in the first two. And then after that, yeah, he plays Wolves at home, who just conceded six to Chelsea. Aston Villa have a brilliant run of games. They're right at the top of the ticker that we just looked at from Scout. Watkins and Rodgers could be a proper good differential shout. That combination for those on wildcard. And then my third forward, we've got João Pedro in. Like, many are worried about his minutes. He can play 10, he can play 9, he can even play on the left when Matoma's not on. I think João Pedro is a very, very good bet. He's on penalties. I know they're signing players and I know they're going to be, there's a lot of strength and depth there. I still think João Pedro is often going to be in the best 11. When Welbeck went off at the weekend, João Pedro moved from the number 10 to the number 9 and we saw his late goal against Man United. I think Herzler wants him on the pitch the vast majority of the time. And sure, he's a bit of a minutes risk. Minter will lose some minutes. Jota's going to lose some minutes. Look, Trent and Salah are even getting subbed off. You don't have to have 90 minute men if they're very, very good options over 70. Smith Rowe hasn't been getting 90. They've still been really, really good options. Of course, in an ideal world, we have a team full of 90 minute men. But give me a 70, 80 minute man with higher upside, and I prefer them all day long to the 90 minute man that just ticks over on two points every week. Okay? Um, so look, that's how the Premier League works. These clubs are spending money. These clubs have got good benches. And because of the five sub rule, and because the teams have got very good squads, especially early in the season before there's too many injuries, we see a lot of attacking subs later in games. So your DMs, your defensive midfielders at four and a half million, Harry Winks, sure, he won't get subbed off, but he's going to tick over two points. Have the upside picks, the more attacking players. And if they lose 10, 15 minutes at the end of each game, that's not a problem. So that's where we're at. I like this team very much. It's 100 million on the nose. 100 million on the nose. The concerning bit here for me, only five of these players, before I make my transfer this week, only five of these players from the 15 are in my team. Let's go through them. Trent is in my team. Robinson is in my team. I've got Jota, that's three. I've got Rogers, that's four. And I've got Haaland, that's five. Oh, okay, I've got Bentley. <laughs> Doesn't really count. I've got five to six players in my team from this 15. Does that make me consider a wild card? I guess it does. It needs a bit more thought. I don't think it's for me, though. I think a game week four wild card is possible. I think a game week six wild card is even more possible. So let's watch this space. However, I know a lot of you are keen to wild card, and I completely, completely get it. This is a good team that I think stands the test of time. 
right? And remember with wildcard, you can carry your transfers before the wildcard. So if you've got two free transfers and you wildcard, you come out the wildcard, you've still got the two frees. That's really, really important. The fact we can roll more makes the wildcard slightly less precious. You perhaps don't have to overthink it. If you feel like the time is now, hit that button. And when you're also hitting buttons, guys, do hit the like button, do hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you tomorrow for another video. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.